thanks for serving. Um, I myself have not convened any public or any <clears throat> community discussion around budget priorities. I see that it's part of your agenda, and I'll be very curious as you address that to hear how the board is actively seeking public input on uh, district priorities as you come into budgeting. And um, enthusiastic to see that done really well, and happy to help if I can. Well, first we have a quick agenda amendment. The under board governance, it should say approve finance committee charge instead of approve negotiations committee charge. So just wanted to note that before we moved forward. Oh, so you're amending the agenda. Got it. Yes, agenda. because that Got was it. Yes, that a, comes first. Yeah, it was a difference. Pertaining to the minutes <clears throat> from last time. If there's a question I've got to ask, it has to be pulled? Yes. It does, yeah. I would like to pull the minutes. So I think, I don't, do I make the motion? Or do I make the motion incorporating that? You make the motion incorporating that. Just incorporate that, it, make yeah. it easy. Move to approve the consent agenda ex with the exception of the minutes. Second. Is there a favor? Aye. Aye. You opposed? Tita. It, it says under board governance, approve finance committee charge. And we didn't do that, did we? No, we did not approve finance no. committee charge. Okay, so I think that needs to be taken out of the menu. That's a good catch. Yeah, great catch. What did we do around this? We talked, we talked about, about that. And the, and the one right before that no explains vote. what we did. Yeah. And then no, after huh? that, it there said no we vote, approved. Though. It there says no we'll vote. discuss it November 7th. And yeah. then right after it, it says approved. I was trying to figure out if I read well, it. Well, I hope that only because that's how it was obvious. Right. Mm -hmm. Someone following along, who was concerned to get that in five minutes. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Okay, it just reads like we approved it. Right. Yeah. So we should always list the vote whenever we have. Pardon me? Whenever we approve something, we should always list the vote. Okay. So if I understand the way this works, is that the bullet is the heading but not the action, it's not, approve is not a action. verb or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so then maybe we, it's okay. I well, just, or would it make sense to say like something like no? No action. No action. No action. Let's add that. Yeah. 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 No action taken. Thank you. I move we approve the minutes with that change. Favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Excellent. Um, so, learning focus. You guys ready? Yeah. And I want to welcome Emma Harder and, oh, I don't even need your last name. Petrero. Petrero? Yes. Uh, who are our students rep for this year for one, welcome, and two, thanks for serving. Um, Excited to have you on board. Yeah, thanks for opening the forum up to the student perspective. It's really important. Um, we just have like some printouts so you guys can follow along with what we're talking about today. Um, <coughs> I think there might be extras. And you, oh wait, do you need anything projected or no? Um, no, no, it's just that. And so we've structured our presentation in um, student celebrations, student concerns, and student needs. And so student celebrations are just essentially um, celebrating all the good things that are happening within um, the Montpelier Roxbury school system and um, what we've noticed here as high schoolers at MHS. And student concerns is what we have heard and seen um, that students in, our, in the student body, especially at Montpelier High School, are really concerned with and um, just based on their own experiences and the student needs is how we believe, but what we believe are the most important concerns to address and how we can go about finding a solution. 
Yeah, um, so I'll start and I'll talk about the role in conference and as a member of the RJA, the Racial Justice Alliance at Montpelier High School who actually helped raise the Black Lives Matter flag last year. Um, I had the pleasure and the privilege to help lead and facilitate a workshop along with um, some other student leaders from the group. And, um, and at the Roland Conference, I think it was really great to have the opportunity to um, connect with a lot of other teachers and educators and student leaders who were also in attendance. And it was just great to talk about my own experiences as a student here at MHS and in the Montpelier school system. and. Um, our journey towards, I don't know, um, striving for equity in our schools and how raising the Black Lives Matter flag to me and to many others plays a big role in that. Um. So the uh, next one is less serious, but um, it's just the Student Council hosted a Halloween costume contest uh, last Wednesday. and. Um, it was pretty successful. There was a lot of student and teacher participation. Um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, and it, I think it is just one of those things that like brightens our school climate and helps the school spirit and unity. Um, and then the Interact Club, uh, which is a club associated with the Rotary, uh, they did a gleaning and they picked several thousand pounds of apples, which is the, the most successful fundraising effort that club has ever yes. done. So, <laughs> in terms of the money made from yeah. those apples. So that's really impressive and great. Um, and we have an applied chemistry class, and it focuses on um, I don't know, the practical application of something that can seem really like arbitrary and like useless almost, but um, which is how some students may view certain subjects. But um, the class, um, the class made soap. And it smells really great, and they're selling it, and they'll be selling it over the next few months, and that's sort of a regular occurrence that happens here at MHS. And we also had a sports banquet. Um, we were just celebrating the end of fall season, and uh, that was great. First season for volleyball, and that was a successful mm -hmm. season, so. Yeah, it was a great opportunity to finally have all the fall sports teams come together, and. It was a great way to sort of emphasize the athletic community that we have here. So it was good. Um, so moving on to student concerns, uh, I want to highlight the continued efforts to support diversity and inclusion at um, in the Montpelier Roxbury schools education. And I know that last year we saw the Race Against Racism and the Black Lives Matter flag being raised, as well as the Day of Silence, organized by the QSA. And I think that student leaders and student advocacy, and as well as um, working with administrators and the school board, has made such an environment possible and allowed us to make such great progress. Um, but at the same time, although I, I don't want to speak for others and speak on behalf of others. I, from the student, other experiences of other students here that I've um, heard about or seen, I know that there are still um, several incidences where um, students of color and especially LGBT students aren't being supported enough either um, in terms of their curriculum or just like comments that are made and little incidences of like harassment and um, and I know that the educational environment here however great it may be still allows these two totally different um, aspects of society to really flourish and at the same like and while we've made a lot of really great progress in terms of um, supporting our students and like I said like with the Black Lives Matter flag and um, really visible ways that we support um, margin students from marginalized populations there are still a lot of um, th there's not enough infrastructure to prevent um, moments where those same students often feel misrepresented or hated or left out or hurt yeah. Can you explain to the community listing what 
QSA stands for? Oh, um, it stands for Queer Straight Alliance. Um, and I, I know they're going to change their name just because it's, yeah. So uh, one of the things that we've been talking about uh, maybe implementing and we've had meetings with Mr. McCray about um, uh, the restorative justice the practices. Implement yeah, practices and like the implementation of those ideas um, uh, just as a way to support the student body um, and kind of negate the harmful uh, situations that have been going on and also like just rebuild um, our school our student body, mm -hmm. yeah. And something that restorative justice practices focuses a lot upon is um, when, I don't know, issues do arise, um, focusing on both the perpetrators <coughs> in that situation as well as compensating for how the victims may feel and letting them, like I feel like Emma said, work to rebuild, which is really important. Um, and <coughs> the Racial Justice Alliance has also um, drafted an equity policy and is working with the school board to, um, I don't know, find the, um, just to keep working on it and find the best final draft that we can and um, just so we can find a practical solution to some of the problems that we've seen and um, continue in our commitment to, this, to Montpelier, stu Montpelier Roxbury students that <coughs> we made when we did choose to raise the Black Lives Matter flag here, which is just to always keep striving for equity in whatever way we can. And I know that um, as a member of the RJA and someone who works closely with um, other members and leaders, I know that they are really wanting to ensure that there's a lot of transparency in this process as well, which I think is great for both parties because it would just allow us to find a solution where de demands are met and promises are kept and um, just find something that works for the both, both of us. So uh, moving on to student needs, um, we've been thinking a lot and recognizing, I guess, um, a stratified situation um, educationally here um, in the MPS or MRPS system. Um, and that's basically, I believe you guys have referred it to, um, you've titled it the achievement gap. Um, and there's data that supports the achievement gap. Um, and basically, uh, we've noticed unequal access to academic opportunities. Um, just, I don't know if you can elaborate on that. Sure. That something that you, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. Um, I um, personally brought this up because I've noticed that in a really small school system and in small schools, um, while there's the chance to have re learning that's really personalized to different students' um, needs, there is still, there, um, there's a sort of favoritism that arises and um, teachers and uh, the administration will inevitably end up having expectations for certain students that are really high based on the performance their past performance and expectations for other students that don't necessarily um, that aren't as high and aren't um, the types of expectations that can push them to grow and move forward and so I think that just moving forward we need to place I don't know a greater focus on ensuring that all students are able to grow and that um, students aren't left out of cer certain opportunities. Yeah. yeah, and something that is really striking um, about this situation is that we have some really high achieving students um, and then we have some very, we have some students that are really struggling and uh, I think I think that if we have systems in place for uh, teachers, like educational resources, like trainings for teachers that um, give them the support they need to support students um, that have like diverse socioeconomic backgrounds, diverse just home lives. Yeah, yeah um, 
that's really important, and I think that's something that we might be lacking. Um, Uh, so yeah, I guess now we can take questions if you have any. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was very helpful. And excellent. Um, questions? Bridget. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, both of you, for a really thoughtful presentation. Um, on your last point, when you were talking about resources that were available, and you mentioned um, having more trainings for teachers, I was wondering if you could talk about the availability of counseling support in the school and if you think it's sufficient and if you have any thoughts about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any really distinct thoughts about that. Uh, I, I, I do think um, we, I think we have some situations in the student body um, where counseling could be really, really helpful, um, like drug abuse. Um, I think this is more pertinent to uh, the high school, but uh, I think if we make those options more accessible, uh, then we can prevent things like diversion and other and or and just help students <laughs> get out of those situations. So. When you speak of counseling, what do you like? Is there something specific that you have in mind? Just because I know that can sort of be general. Well, yeah, good question. I'm. I was thinking of both sort of the guidance counseling model, like resources for students to go to that are not necessarily academic. I know we have mm -hmm. um, mental health counseling available to some, you know, in mm -hmm. some fashion in the schools, and there's got it. But are those kinds of resources, you know, do you have any sense of whether students think those are available or find them um, sufficiently available? And it's okay. I don't. I, this is not in any way meant to put you on the spot. Yeah. 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 Totally fine. Okay. I think it definitely varies on like who in the student body that you're talking to and what might apply to us or might not apply to us. Is I think the fact yeah. that it varies is something that mm -hmm. is of concern yeah. and mm -hmm. related to what we just brought up. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that makes it difficult to answer. Mm -hmm. But it is something that is really how students are treated is dependent on how they're seen and a lot of times and like I said in a small um, community when teachers and counselors get to know students one-on-one -on -one, what they offer to them could be like vastly different in a way that sometimes isn't helpful so yeah. Steve? Yeah, I have a couple things first of all thanks secondly um, do you uh, are you guys mentioned the Q it's QSA, right? Is there any mentoring going on between QSA and the GSA in the middle school or any kind of connections there where those middle school students are feeling some kind of like community or support? Um, GSA is, is pretty strong in the middle school, but it's um, but kids are at a totally different developmental stage at that point in terms of trying to figure out like, you know, I guess it's similar in terms of safety of coming out or in terms of like who are their allies in the community and which, which and at that point, you know, in fifth or sixth grade, a lot of times kids are just not even sure who their allies might be and who they might not be. I'm so, going to ask you the same question I asked her. Would you specify what GSA stands for? Oh, for that's Gay Straight Alliance, I think it is. And so um, I'm just wondering whether you know if there's any connections between the two or are there any mentoring or going back and forth or supports there. I know that the um, <coughs> GSA at the middle school has um, been really strong this year, and this year especially, it's something that's kind of new, and I'm excited to see sort of diversity and minority support groups um, popping up at the middle school, but I don't, and I'm not a member, and neither is Emma, so we can't speak from personal experience, but from what I know of, I haven't really seen a close connection between um, the high school and the middle school um, groups on in all for a lot of different um, causes. So mm. I'm not sure, and the fact that I haven't seen it, um, I don't know, means that there might not be much yeah. happening. The other question, thank you. The other question is um, something I often wonder about, and I think students maybe have a a really good perspective on this is 
um, how do you, when it comes to especially um, race and ethnicity, do you think, and I guess maybe, yeah, I mean, do you think our, our staff and faculty have enough literacy or fluency in those topics to be able to really lead? I think that we can do more. Um, I think that there's potential leadership mm -hmm. in, in this school. Like, I think that we have seen some like great things. Um, I, I think that we can always improve, though. And I think that a lot of teachers and, I don't know, staff members are trying, but we also actively like need to work on professional development to keep giving them the tools that they can use. And also in our hiring practices in the district, making sure that we're um, conscientious of different demographics so that um, students can sort of see themselves in the people that are giving them their education and are sometimes like might be their only resources in certain situations. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I think we're conscious that students have done a lot of leadership lately, and we want that to not always be the case, right? So, Tina. So I want to thank you also, and welcome to the board. <laughs> thank you. So I'm going to do a check-in in process. So you did you pick these three topics or these three headings to report on today? Uh, do you mean, I mean are we gonna student celebrations, student concerns, student needs? Yes. yes. It's okay. I'm yes. just checking the process. <laughs> yeah. So so then the second thing is, is this something you expect to do on a regular basis? The specific format? Yes. Yeah. I mean are you gonna report to us on a regular basis? Maybe it's Jim. Semi-regularly. And, and so do you have a plan for how you would figure out what the elementary school and the middle school are doing? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I, uh, I do play mentoring at the middle school, and I will be spending quite a bit of time there soon. Um, <laughs> and um, I think... I think that we will figure out a way to get to the elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Thank you. Talk to you. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, thank you so much, both of you. This is extremely valuable. Um, really, really, really appreciate it. I'm curious to know your number, the first of your concerns here, the continued efforts to support diversity and inclusion. Um, some of the marginalized um, actions and students that you mentioned before. Um, I'm wondering, are there any events planned, um, student-led events, teacher-led events planned or kind of percolating right now to help address some of those cultural issues, kind of like the Black Lives Matter flag last year? Um, if so, I'm curious to know what they are, what you guys are thinking about, or if you've heard of anything, and also if there are any ways for the board to help support those types of efforts. Or board individual board members, I don't want to speak for them. Well, I know that uh, Club Action, which is the like political activism club here, uh, they're working on um, a social sustainability day um, or so a series of social sustainability stolen blocks, um, which is our uh, uh, what what is it? Our, like it's a you can talk to your teachers and you can get... It's like kind of like a yes, yeah. yes. Like free period, right? Oh, yeah, free period. Um, and anyway... Oh, I'm not sure I'd like to call it. <laughs> um, and during those, we would have speakers come and uh, talk to students about, uh, I, you know, issues of diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, and I think... I, I'm not sure if the board would be able to help much in that. Um, but something that's on your radar, it's still percolating. And I think that clubs are always going to be planning different things and um, using their student members that are often like members of the LGBT community or um, people of color to plan student-led events that are really, really helpful and effective. And um, 
and I mean, listening to students is probably the most um, effective way to um, improve our school. And so just supporting clubs and student-led groups is a really great way to um, just support the positive parts of Mount Player High School. Actually, at this point of the discussion, I only have one really easy question left. What is the Interact Club? Okay, so it's a um, volunteer club. Uh, it's basically, it's well, it's a community service club. Um, uh, and it's just affiliated with the Rotary, so what the Rotary does, kind of, we, we just follow their lead. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great, thank you. I have a less easy question. Um, <laughs> You know the kind of the lack of infrastructure and support in certain instances for you know students of color and for the LGBTQ students, um, you know, and other students who might be marginalized or not part of you know the dominant socioeconomic group. Um, what like what specifically are you referring to in, like, in terms of like a lack of infrastructure? Is it that you feel the teachers aren't properly trained, the resources aren't there? Um, is it that the student body doesn't have the sensitivity it needs? Is it all of them? Is it that the curriculum needs to be updated to be more reflexive of all of all of the above? Yeah, and it's like a I, I'd say it's it's pretty much all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, I think I I would really stress like I I think teachers might struggle to deal with situations that are mm -hmm. like like this complex. So when you have like yeah when you have such a diverse range of students, like how do you treat all of them equally, mm -hmm. but also give them all the resources that they need when they need different things mm -hmm. um so yeah i think professional development is really important in this case and do you think that's a lack of resources or do you think it's a, it's a cultural thing where the people, there's they might have they might have been trained but they maybe just are uncomfortable and don't necessarily always rise to the occasion or is it is that a hard thing to assess how how would they know about the teacher training Oh, that's a good question. I mean, well, how about this? Do they? Do they? Is it a fluency thing where they're not? Do you feel some teachers aren't necessarily to appear fluent in in dealing with complex situations? Yes and no. I no. Yeah. I don't think that that's what it is. Okay. I think it, I think some of it is cultural, but I think that we can promote something different here. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's very helpful. Anything else? Hello, Michelle. So thank you. This is great. We appreciate it. Um, standing in for our superintendent for the superintendent report is Grant. Uh, good, because I have a lot of questions. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> More cross exam than crush. I will be glad to take notes. Um, <laughs> I know that it was presented, it was part of your packet, so I will be glad to take any notes or questions and uh, discuss them with Libby and get back to you if you have them. Is there anything listed out in the superintendent report for you want to come out or discuss? I actually did have a question about the report in compliance with the travel reimbursement policy. Um, this is a minor deal, but I think in the interpretation she talked about board members being reimbursed and talk about significant travel between Montpelier and Roxbury as being a reimbursable trip. I have never heard of a board member being reimbursed for the trip and wouldn't expect board members to be submitting mileage, but I was just kind of curious about her interpretation there about board members and reimbursement and the consideration of the distance between Montpelier and Roxbury as a reimbursable distance. And it was just nothing big. I was just kind of curious there what she was thinking. 
Yeah, like you're, I, I can't imagine very many situations where board members would, would actually put in for mileage. Um, as an example, for staff members, if I uh, come to work here at the high school and during the day I need to travel to Roxbury in my personal vehicle to do something and then come back and then go home, that would be two trips that I could get reimbursed for. If I drive directly from home to Roxbury for a morning meeting and then I come here and then I go home, the one trip from Roxbury here could be reimbursed. So it's, it's those kinds of things. So if a board member was on board business at a school and went to another school and then went someplace else, then, then perhaps. But, um, but that would be, I would think, pretty rare. Because I was just surprised to see board members included in her interpretation for reimbursement. So I was yep. just trying um, to get some. If you go to a conference, then you could be reimbursed for that travel as, as well as for the conference fees. So right. that there, might be the case. Is. Like Lake Maury? Yeah. So I can get reimbursed for that? Hmm? So I can get reimbursed for that? You, you, you certainly can. If I can get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have one question. Yeah, Michelle. On the, um, and Grant, I don't, I'm sorry to put you on the spot if you're not uh, part of this, but the, um, Evidence of district goals under equity, it says that the MHS in service on the first was focused on power. And gender dynamics. Did you see the next page? No. Because that might help. That might have helped. Power and gender dynamics in the workplace. Yes. And outright Vermont presented. I did not understand that it went on there. Okay. Other questions? So, um, will we get a Roland student presentation and round robins um, presentation or something at a different point? I think they're talking about it, the comments. It's just that from her report. Her report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, it was my understanding. It was a Do you know what the round robin is? That's when she visits. Yeah. When the administrators, administrators like her and Mike Berry and Mary Lundeen will go to a school and spend pretty much the whole day there. And they will go from one will be meeting with the principal while the others might be in classrooms. And, and they'll rotate around. So that's the round robin that she's referring to. And they just started doing this. Um, I think they've gone to two schools so far. And then they meet and discuss what they've seen. Mm -hmm. Is that a completely new thing? Well, is that this year, yeah. yeah. Great. Any other questions for Grant? Okay. I just want to point, I don't know if you guys have had, if the students have had a chance to look at these things, but if you look at the last section on it, on the superintendent's report, evidence of district goals, these are things that the superintendent lists as things that are proving effectively that we're working on these four key areas for us. So these are these are also things you, if you're not hearing about them directly, you can communicate back to students too. These are because these you can see equity, personalization, those things are both um, things I know you guys brought up in your conversation so it goes on to the next page also so for instance the equity column has five bullets in it of things that happened just since the last basically in the last month or since the last report so just it's a it's a really handy document to have every time there's a meeting to see what the student has been working on it's basically it. and you guys get these packets correct and also just if you have questions during the meeting feel free to ask them no obligation, but you're <coughs> feel free to participate like everyone else does. Great. Uh, moving on to budget. Um, so we posed a question. You all got this um, lovely brochure that the district uh, puts together each year. 
Um, Olivia and I wanted to kind of pose the question to the board about how these are being used, if they could be used better, um, whether we might want to do something different. I think Libby's already explored some ways to perhaps do it more cheaply. Um, it's a nice brochure. I'm not sure how much it gets out. I'm not sure how much it's referenced. So I uh, would love to kind of hear board input on your experiences with this in the past and um, what you feel the, the value of it is and maybe some brainstorm ideas about ways it can be used differently or better. Michelle? I think if we were going to mail it out to everyone in the district, then it would be great. But since I think we have a limited number of copies made and don't distribute them in any way whatsoever, then it's not so useful. And if you only made glossy the front, and made the inside not so glossy, you might be able to mail them to some people. <laughs> I guess maybe it's a general question. Um, potential differences between the two communities. In Montpelier, does the town send you, does the city send you an annual report from the town and the school district? Not so anymore. That, not anymore. Well, no. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if it gets mailed. Maybe they had an article that said they don't have to do it and it just has to be provided. It's um, provided electronically, but they produce a copy that you can pick up. Pick up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They did use, they mailed it, it until they used relatively it. recently. Yeah, yeah but until maybe last year. Yeah. yeah. Until they, until the show had bunny ears and stuff. <laughs> 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 like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it is a little bit of a misnomer that it's, that it's, this is listed kind of under budget because it's yeah. not, it's not really a, a financial <laughs> annual report. This is more of a school report. Yes. Right. Um, and I think what Libby was thinking was maybe not so fancy and glossy and mailing it out, but maybe more of an online. Um, now that we have a better website up, or at least transitioning to a better website, I think she was thinking more this would be an online presentation, um, which would be, of course, cheaper. There, there hasn't been an agency of education requirement that you produce a uh, document such as this in some way or other and get it out to the community. Steve. I mean, My so sense is that if we're going to do an annual report, it should report on our progress towards our ends. Because isn't that the whole point of us existing? And I don't really see the ends spelled out. And I think that in fact, there's, this is basically a public relations piece that doesn't really report on hard anything. I mean, yes, we've got numbers in here, but Not really. it would yeah. really be better if we had, if we put our own, um, our own, uh, what were our goals for the year and did we achieve them? Or to what extent did we achieve what them? What did we invest in and where did right. we want to go? Why are we doing what we're doing? What is the goal? What are we working on right now? And how, and the superintendent's report does some of that, but it's mm, not particularly accessible, and I don't think it's that that uh, concrete. And I then I think breaking it down by school is nice to get people involved in the, in the document because people enter it that way. Um, but then you know, like a technology re curriculum and technology report, I wonder in such a small document whether those sorts of things are necessary. So I guess what I'm saying is, I think if we're going to do a report to the community, it should be against the standards by which we set that, that we set and then we should report on how we're doing towards our standards. And that's what the yeah. agency, of Trans uh, the agency of Education you said you should do. And so I think, I think that's, that's great to have as a component, and I agree with Steve that this is very fluffy, though there's plenty of cute pictures in here and everything. Um, but I do think that there, this is an opportunity to, to provide some information that isn't just these are our ends, these are our goals, here's our progress. I think that's an important component, don't get me wrong, but I think we can also incorporate some other just you know, statistical information about number of students and what, what enrollment in different uh, classes is like. And I think, I think it can be used as not just a focus solely on our ends, but also to incorporate some other yeah. useful information. Even like enrollment trends. Yeah, exactly. Like what we're foreseeing 
right. aspirations for the district, mm -hmm. um, realities of our environment. Exactly. Um, that because some of that reflects on how taxpayers are going to perceive the district as they make decisions. There's always a final phase of the senior center, and for people who don't have children in the, in the school, it's helpful to get some of those statistics. Mm -hmm. Not even the statistics, the stories of what's happening right. in the buildings, because yeah. they don't have the personal connection. Yeah. Right. So with our populations in both communities, you know, lots of people don't have kids in the community. They're not connected to the schools. So it does, Andrew's right, it does have a place having each principal sharing what's been happening, what's working, what's not, because a lot of our community members don't have a personal connection to the buildings. Bridget? I also just wanted to raise a question about what we would do this year, because we don't have any ends policies. We don't have a vision policy yet <laughs> so yeah. that part Maybe I mean there's just that. but it's tough yeah I mean, it does that's kind of long-term thinking but this year thinking might need a little tweaking but maybe that's kind of you know what is the work of the, the district this year that's unique yeah. to this year the merger yeah and the, the successful educate you know execution of the merger that's the transition of a new leadership team the I mean these are big the beginning yeah. of the bond process the um, the continue, Focus the, on equality. The, yeah. yeah, the equity yeah. issues that yeah. we're working yeah. on. I mean, I think there's are some big headlines that regular folks would be like, I'm glad to see you guys are working on some stuff, yeah. right? It's not just administering the school, it's actually moving the district forward. Mm -hmm. And people awful at, often ask me, so how's the merger going? Okay, that could be a, a question. How's the merger going? Yeah. No, I think we have a lot of really, a really good story to tell, right, in terms of all the stuff that's going on. Um, including some tax stability, enrollment numbers that are looking, you know, solid, if nothing else, and, you know, anyway. Yeah, and no, I agree. Think, it's I think that it would be nice to hear from Libby sort of what she's learned so far. What does she think we ought to promote about this district? She's got a new look at it. Yeah, no, I think those are all great suggestions. Um, in terms of form, I agree it's probably... Oh, oh I, I was on the form issue. I mean, I think having it online will be make it much more accessible. I've actually never had anyone suggest to me that they read that. Mm -hmm. um, but I also hear Tina's point that at the senior center, you know, that's a place for paper copies. So, but having it produced in a format that's readily accessible online doesn't mean we can't print some off yeah. and have them available to people that want them. But at least it gives you multiple and channels. Yeah, and to add add to that, I think we could have some hard copies, um, just like one page, like kind of flyers. You know, city hall, senior center, directing folks to the place where they can view the digital yeah. copy, so that it's not just sitting out there online. No. Can, can we can certainly email a digital copy to everyone in the system pretty easily. Included yeah. as part of the yeah. principles. And you know, it falls in the same category. We not long ago had a conversation about handbooks, which are now online. Mm -hmm. And so the question is wherever we put them, how would we ever get anybody to read them? So um, it's the same question. And I don't know about the transfer from only having it on paper to only having it on line somehow. How is it to get people to I don't have the answer. It's just a question. Mm -hmm. Do people at the Senior Center read them? Yes. Excellent. People not named Tina. <laughs> not named Tina. Right. <laughs> not named Tina. The real question is why do we want people to read them? I mean, how, how important is it to us that people read it? Well, I mean, I think if we're, I, for two reasons. I mean, I, I think it's good to, especially if, if we move it towards the format that you're suggesting, I think it's a way to not only just tell the story about our school district, but also tell them what the taxpayers, what they're investing in, what, you know, where the school's going, what our vision is, what what the goals are, um, what and we're building. what we're doing. What we're doing, If yeah. you don't have kids in the school, you efficiency-based learning? Yeah. I mean, you know. What's that? Mm -hmm. and, and why do I care? I, perhaps in more of like a newspaper format than where it's pithy articles, not New York Times, but more like Times Argus, where it's like small, shorter articles that are really kind of 
factually kind of like we're reporting news right now. I'm sorry, oh. Michelle, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I, the, other, the other use for it, um, and this is maybe hopeless a little, but um, we do have a lot of Montpelier kids who go to private schools um, at least through eighth grade, and then we have a huge influx of them coming to the high school. Um, I know when my kids were elementary school age, a lot of the parents just weren't comfortable with the idea of the institution, you know, their little kids in the big, scary institutional facility kind of a thing. And they wanted their kids in the more um, small scale private environment and then apparently by the time they get to high school they're comfortable with it um, or something. I don't know exactly how those decisions are made but um, I don't know if um, this is a really nice publication and if I got this as a parent of an elementary school kid would it make me more comfortable with sending my kids to public school? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it might. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'd love to have them. And I was wondering whether it was used as part of the recruitment process to try to try to get tuition children to come in from overseas or from. I'm sure it is over I'm the mountain. I'm not sure, but if it is used in that way, then it may have a, a marketing value. In that way, the same same kind of idea. I think Anne wrote her own when she went. <laughs> I think so. Too. Yeah. yeah, I think it, it does have marketing value, and I think I think we also have an online version. Probably do a lot of links within it, so mm -hmm. we could have a you know the two sentence verb on what personalized learning plans are. That's so do someone it. who's reading at the senior center and doesn't want to delve deeply, but like oh that's what that is. But you know a parent or a parent of a prospective student I could to point out that click on a thing and learn a lot more. Um, all people without children are not necessarily seniors. Mm -hmm. I'd like to point They're all the seniors, I think. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well. There are young people that don't have children that might want to learn about yeah. that. Two, two of whom are on this board. <laughs> 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 I wasn't going to name anybody. But <laughs> um, and good so point. Kind of big picture. So I look at this as coming strictly from the administration, not really having much board guidance. But our district report that would go in the annual report would be where the board chair would probably have a letter. We'd have the financial. No. Um, no, not in the past. We have not. You haven't? No. Mm -hmm. So you haven't? It's just been a budget statement, really. Okay. So I'm curious, in the past, since we have a new relationship with the city, we are not part of the city. That's our new relationship. We used to send a segment to the city report, right? Is that what that's called? Yeah. And so are, will we no longer do that? No, we will still do that. So the budget information is still going to be in the town of Roxbury's annual report and then the city of Montpelier's annual report. So there will be the, all the budget information and the articles will be there. Um, we're, we're just trying to figure out now if in Roxbury the warning was separate for the school than the town and it was just combined in the city. So we're trying to sort through those kinds of details right now. But it, as far as I know, the information is still going to go to both municipalities to be included in the annual reports. What, what I do think would be really important here, though, is, and this gets back to what Steve was talking about and some of what Bridget was talking about with the vision policy, is you know having, having a vision for the district and articulating that clearly, um, having, you know, three overarching principles or that, that are really guiding the work of the district that we're really striving for, um, I think is gonna be really important to communicate, um, well, to get us all on the same page as a community and working in, in a common direction. Um, and so I, I do think that this will be a really important, this could be a really important place to uh, bring all of, all of that information together around those principles and those goals um, and that's leading to my question of so what is our general um, timeline for establishing a vision policy and establishing kind of goals for the district of well, those lines? we're talking about vision later okay and we're then have a vision by the end of today well i know that's <laughs> yeah. not going to happen today, so beyond that <laughs> beyond <laughs> that i i think we're going to pick up and seriously after we get done with the budget process mm -hmm. okay 
which is not that far. Maybe away. this time next year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that enough feedback for the, back for the administration, administration to move forward with some, 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 some adjustments to this? Kind of what what's the, the I think the board not isn't necessarily doing this document. So I I think that's good feedback. I mean, I wrote down some notes so I can convey to Libby, you know, mm -hmm. Grant with a C or two so we can can pass along. Um, yeah, I, I think what I heard is general consensus is that have need something where we might be required by AOE. I have to not directly put that question to Libby or not, but we, we may have to put out something whether we want to or not. Uh, but having something is, is helpful. Um, having something glossy that sits in a box is not, uh, but having some copies that we can distribute at certain places where, um, you know, electronic, uh, you know, where it may be good to have that, where, you know, electronic forms are not necessarily the, the preferred choice. Um, and then having a little more, a little less fluff and a little more substance in terms of vision, what we're doing, what our goals are, uh, what the district's working on, what our investments leading towards, um, you know, what's the academic vision, what's the, the broader vision. Uh, and then, you know, some other basic staff information, enrollment, enrollment trends, um, et cetera. Um, and probably still, you know, a little narrative and feel good stories about what's going on at school. So it's not just all numbers and and work, but uh, and there's some homework probably to be done because uh, it's it's not just AOE. It's in statute. There's certain data that you have to provide. Some of it is what we send through the municipalities for their annual reports, but there might be pieces that are outlined in statute that aren't in those documents that might need to be in here so we probably need to take a quick look at that too and maybe there's an in between so we don't mail it anymore but maybe it's good policy to mail everybody a postcard that says here's where you could find the um, annual report and by the way here's where you could find the budget or something think about what we want people to look at and how would they find it because we haven't had a good history until now about using the website so yes. I stopped recommending people to the website before, and now we're up and sort of running again, so maybe it's time to remind them where they can find things. And that might be something for, we had talked last year about a budget trifold or a budget postcard. That might be a good way to not only get information out about the budget, but also, you know, give some people some information about what our, what our website address is and some of those things right. so that people can get acclimated. So the next uh, bullet point under budget is recent public feedback towards budget priorities. I know we've had some reports on student groups and some other reach out, but um, and as Nathan just reported, bombs has not has not met yet. Um, any other report outs? We have got, I do want to say, we'll talk about this on the 14th too, we have gotten quite a few emails about transportation. Um, all in favor, and I'd say we've probably gotten between 10 and 15 relatively lengthy comments. Uh, and I've seen on Facebook there's a petition to that effect going around. And on um, Front Court Forum too. Yes, on yeah. Front Court, last I clicked on it, it was edging towards 200 signatures, so. Um, that feedback is coming in, uh, but um, that's that's all I've gotten. Michelle. So we usually um, do a presentation for the Rotary Club in early January, and um, you should get on call, Joe. Okay, no, I, I did not know we did that. Yeah, oh. get on their schedule. Okay. You know, let me do that. I think I said I tried to get out to the business groups, and that's the close. That's the best one we're going to get to because okay. the uh, Montpelier merchants don't really care. Okay. And the the Rotary <laughs> doesn't really care either. In that they don't want to give us direction. They just want to hear from us. No problem. We're good at that. What? Um, oh, what we've so got. So we usually yeah. we usually go in the beginning of January when the budget's already pretty much made. Oh. And just tell them what. 
but they just want to vote yes or no. They don't want to have any input. They want to hear together. what the changes, you know. Okay. You what, yeah. So, so it's a little early then, but we can get on their schedule. Okay. It, now is the time to get on yeah. the, the schedule for January. And you're you're gonna have. I got it. Steve. Okay. Cool. In the past, Brian has done a, a speech, like a wow. substantial. Speech. Okay, so we do it for anybody else. CC, Libby, and I. I will be uh, inviting Libby to here. So we can make sure that the they get what they want. Yeah. Or they, so do we do it? They for get something. The Lions Club or any other organizations like that. We have put out the word several years running to that we are happy to come to any meeting. Any meeting of any existing community group, like the neighborhood groups um, and uh, church groups, and so far, no takers. No. I, I do know that for like the Rotary and the Lions Club, they plan their agendas like way out. Right. So that's getting on there. Right I will. I will reach out. Is that the one you think is most likely to reach out to besides Rotary? I don't know. That's uh, the only one I can think of, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> there must be others. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can find a contact for the Lions, and I know I can do the Rotary, so we'll... Uh, that's two calls right next to each other, so that's easy. Michelle, what method has the board used to reach out and offer that? Um, we have... Individual board members have directly contacted organizations, and also we've put out um, posts on Front Porch Forum just saying that we're available to speak to your group that's already meeting. But, you know, we'll come to your book group meeting if that's... I, I can do that. Sounds good. Yeah, go I think last year was the first year we had our own informational hearing, which wasn't well attended, but, I mean, it was a new thing because, especially in Montpelier, People were used to going to the town meeting and we would have like a five minute section in there and mm -hmm. and now we have our own dedicated informational hearing so maybe there's some kind of renorming and 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 publicizing of that opportunity mm -hmm. yep. uh, for this year it would be nice to have more people there I think it was like negative 20 it was <laughs> a little chilly <laughs> as, is, as was most of the winter but you remind me we're alternating towns biannually for that right is that how we set that? I, oh, I, I honestly don't know. We did it in both We did, we did, both both last we did, yeah. we did um, I guess we did do it in. Yeah, I think like public hearings in both, but I right. think the actual, uh, the official informational <coughs> hearing was here. It was. But there oh, were okay. public hearings in both places, I think. Yeah, and we'll be presenting the budget during regular meetings in both places. Right. I think we have an official meeting right now just in Montpelier, at least. Yeah, the day before the vote, probably. Yeah. Anything else on public feedback? Okay, yeah. so board governance. Um, yes. Uh, the board at some point or to be created. Come out of schedule for the building process so the public can know. Yes. Can we establish that already in the um, yeah, I actually think we have one. Maybe. I think we have one. I think it's in the minutes. Of the, should be in the, is it in the minutes or is it, where do we have that? It's somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where it is. We well, could be redistributed to the board. That would yeah. be great. Because yeah. then the board members can get it out. This is a it, it would probably make sense to post it around too. I'd imagine putting it on the Facebook group would be helpful for folks. Yeah. I don't have a copy of the uh, draft negotiations committee charge. But are you going to approve the finance committee charge first? Um, this was first. Though. This was first on the agenda. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, does the member of the negotiations committee want to 
read through this or you want me to do them up the other way? I'll be glad to read it. The negotiations okay. committee is charged to engage in professional negotiations with the labor organizations that represent the district's teachers and other employees. Final ratification of any agreement will remain the sole responsibility of the board. Bridget. So, um, Ryan asked me a question which I um, looked into today, which was whether we wanted to have something in the charge that, you know, addressed the timing of the negotiations can be getting started. And I said I would try to look into it because I was, I thought I had, a, thought there was a reason not to do it. And that, um, so I just wanted to s explain that um, this is a this is an area that has several overlays of legal requirements already governing the negotiations process. Partly governed by the um, Municipal Labor Relations Act, it's partly governed by the teachers' um, labor relations provisions, and of course, it's governed by our own contracts. And those things actually don't even necessarily line up. Um, so, as one example, the the timing in the two contracts for the teachers and MESA for when you're supposed to start the negotiations for the next session are different. So that was my thinking on why keeping the charge to the bare minimum was probably a good idea because it's very hard to say anything too specific without running into Contacts these between. other requirements. Yeah, I didn't, wasn't sure it was totally necessary, but it was on my radar that we Because it's a really important about. thing that the committee gets started, you know, in compliance with the contracts, et cetera. Steve. <coughs> um, just to be clear, so the negotiations is char committee is, is charged to engage professional negotiations about what topic? Any well, one that we need to negotiate about. Okay. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Any topic. Well, Any again, case. that's governed by law. So yeah. if you put a topic in there, you might be running afoul of what you're required to negotiate on, yeah. right? Okay. Because that's okay. governed by your obligation to bargain in good faith. That's why we were being so Okay, and, and the word ratification is right there? That sentence is in the statute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very minimalist. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, think, I think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 think, I think it's a great approach. Yeah, no, the goal here okay. was really to give, give a charge that, that didn't create problems. <laughs> I make a motion to approve this um, negotiations charge as written. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Fantastic. We have a negotiations charge. Let's see if we can get a finance charge as well. So, here's my copy of the finance charge. Is there a copy of the finance charge? Um, here's the finance charge. Finance committee charge. Does everyone have a copy or do we need? It's under the blue sheet. Does everybody have one? Mm -hmm. um, so this reflects the changes we made after the discussion last time. Uh, finance <laughs> committee charge. The finance committee will. One, meet quarterly to review district financials of the current year's budget, prior year's budgets, and any proposed budgets. Two, conduct an in-depth review of the budget presented by the business manager and administration. Three, report at, at least quarterly to the Montpelier-Roxbury Board of Commissioners. To ensure transparency and comprehensive discussion of financial matters by the full board. Four, work with the full board to ensure the community is presented with timely, accurate, relevant, and understandable financial reports for the district. Five, meet as needed with the school administration and chair to review urgent financial matters. And six, review other financial matters at the board's request. And um, my only change is, aren't we the Montpelier Roxbury, shouldn't be school district, and I don't think we're commissioners anymore, I think we are directors. So we 
read Montpelier Roxbury School District Board of Directors to ensure transparency. That would be the under number three. Jim, look at that. Jim. Yeah. Um, on four. Ensuring the community is presented with the financial reports. Is that something that we already do? I'm just curious about what do you mean that we already do as a board? Yeah. About what that or as a district. I mean I know that they're in our we packets, don't. which are public, so there are it's not that they're we don't. secret. We but don't. Is this is this envisioning that we're going to be coming up with a channel of distribution for financial reports to the community that we don't currently do? This was well, originally we an item in here that implied the committee was doing this, and we thought it wasn't a committee right. job, it was the full board job right. to ensure that the community has timely and accurate. It's not, for example, it doesn't say whether it's once a year or... I totally agree it's the board's job. I was just... Usually we just present the one thing that we go through a great amount of effort to publicly present is the budget, which actually, because it past years and lots of, I mean, it actually is a very comprehensive document, so I was just wondering so what I was getting at. I actually inserted this in here initially when we were going through this, um, and the reason why I inserted this is because uh, when I was talking to community members about the board several months ago before joining, really the only complaint that I heard from community members was that a number, it, it's the only complaint I really heard, and I heard it repeated from a number of people that the board didn't do the best job of getting information about the budget out in a timely and understandable manner. I don't know that that's necessarily fair, so I'm not making any judgments. It was just, and Tina and I talked about this, it was just since we're gonna be, the finance committee is going to be the ones regularly looking at the district finances that we would work with the board to keep that in mind, to keep the idea of presenting information in a timely and reliable manner to the community. Um, like I said, I don't know that that criticism is fair because I've never experienced that myself. I've always found that the information was there when I wanted it, but um, it, it was just something to keep in mind, keep the idea of community engagement in mind. And is it financial, because the financial reports and the budget are different things. I mean, what if it said understandable budget and financial information? I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Only, because I'm just, like, the, yeah. the reports term makes me think of the, the uh, quarterly financial reports. I'm fine with that. Or some other new thing kind of that's thing. called a financial report. Yeah, that we yeah. like to put together. Yeah. 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 Budget and financial yeah. information is yeah. fine to me. I don't know what others think, but I'm totally fine with that. Grant, what is it called that we have to report in the annual town reports? Because the legislature is very specific in how things are worded and what's re what's presented to the towns around town meeting. Um, um, I, I think one of the few things that's actually required is the prior the three prior year report. It's a one-page thing that comes to us from the, the state once we give them our numbers. Um, I, I, I'd have to go back and see what statute, I mean, I know what we always provide, but I don't know which ones, which of those elements are required by statute, so I can check. Georgia, what was the suggestion you made for the wording change? Understandable, after understandable, replace financial reports with budget and financial information. Okay. And I think we were just thinking financial reports was a generic term, but I can see what you mean. Yeah, about. that's where it sounds to me like a a proper noun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actually, or I was thinking a, as he was reading it about number three, because this is a financial committee charge, that actually Grant gives the quarterly report to the board. Um, Unless he's part considered part of the committee, is it? I'm trying to figure that out. What? Well, we, as we, I read this, I don't. I, I just see this as a duty to make sure that um, you're kind of serving a, a watchdog function. 
that has that report because you'll get the more detailed report prior to it coming to the board right but the verb says report and it's under the committee and that's what I when you read it I thought oh is it the committee supposed to report not to provide not to provide the quarterly report yeah not but just to to say, say either we're doing our yep. job and this is what we looked yep. at and Everything looks fine, or you know that we sat through it with the administration, and we've got these questions that we'd like. I knew that's to what you further. meant. I'm asking, is that what it says? I think it is. It doesn't okay, say yeah. provide the quarterly reports. It says report at least quarterly. To ensure transparency. To ensure transparency. Yeah. To ensure yeah. transparency. Okay, I just checking. When we talked about this before, in a theoretical okay. way, did we talk about a process where, when Grant creates the quarterly report? Sometime between Grant finishing the quarterly report and delivering it to the board, the finance committee meets with Grant, mm -hmm. and due to their superior knowledge of the budget, they can have a richer conversation with Grant about the quarterly report, so that then when we're in the meeting with the quarterly report, they can say... That's exactly it. Right. Thumbs up or... So does number three say what I just said? Well, number one and number three together do. Yeah. Number one and number two. Yeah. Number one and three. So one, two, and three together. Yeah. Okay. I think I think what you're kind of dealing with, I'm kind of struggling too, which is that there's six points here and they're kind of, they have different, they, they could be categorized a little differently or organized. So several of these, one, two, five, and six are gathering information for the committee. And then um, three is a reporting out of information from the committee, and four is kind of its own thing, which is kind of an assisting, it's assists the board in some way. So you kind of got, you know, here are all the ways that we're going, to, that this committee is gonna get intelligence on these four different ways, and then it's going to assist the board in one action and then just report out to the board. So, like I see, what I was thinking is like number five, almost in, in tones that like there'll be a uh, like an emergency finance committee meeting where they're going to just make some decisions or something, and I, I don't know that that's really the intention. It doesn't say that, um, but it actually is it an advi is it advising well, on behalf of the board at that point? Yeah. What is an urgent financial matter? We didn't know, but in case there was one. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I just like think five and six were like in case something happens that we don't. Need yeah, to yeah, that's that's how I read five and six. The too. Verbs to five could actually probably go away in light of six, and six is new because six would have come to us last meeting as our catch-all. Yeah, and six could incorporate emergencies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, and to answer they your question, do anything about an urgent financial matter? They could advise with the idea that they that they have a sense of a board, but that's a dangerous position to put a committee in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, ca I can't really think of any urgent um, matters that would, that I would feel like we should talk, talk to the finance committee about without the full board, because I think of emergencies like, oh, there's a, a mold problem that we got to handle. Well, I don't think, I don't think we would just meet with the finance committee. We have, we yeah. Meet at the board level. And actually, um, six sort of handles that. Right. That's that's what, yeah. That's yeah. That's so we just get rid of five. As yeah. Being I think kind of that's the Just get rid of five. And I think what Michelle was saying was our intent was that, which we did today actually, if we met with the quarterly report and we had five million questions for Grant, it's not five million questions that have to happen during a board meeting. They've yeah. already been asked. And if we thought you needed to know something more, we could say, please yeah. give more information to the board on X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Uh, I guess I just think six maybe should even be moved ahead of three and four. It, it, the first three are definitely sort of a review and gather intelligence, kind of gather information. And then all of a sudden, then they're going to do something with that information, which yeah. is what number three is. I'm fine with that. You're, you're right. Say Dave. that again. Yeah, the first three one, two, reviews. and six are gathering information, and then three is what their kind of what their real purpose is, which is then to report that information out. One, two, three, and four are kind of the things that they do regularly. Yeah, I, I kind of see. Kind of the, like, so you're saying six is kind of like the catch all at the end. Yeah, yes. catch all at the end. Say, say I, I actually think the example we used last meeting was, you know, we have an extremely large bond, and maybe we want. A little more yeah. 
board oversight, and it's a complicated a thing. Project. So yeah, a special project. So okay, we could empower the finance committee to assist yeah. Andrew, for instance, in making some of those playground. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, as I kind of read it, would be one, one, two, three, four is what the finance committee usually does. Okay. And then five is kind of anything else we want to do that's related to finances. Can it? Could it? Does it make sense to not just review, but to re review and report on other financial matters? Because then, sure. it, then it sure. sort of ties sure. it up. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I assume the board would have asked us to. Review it for some at the board's board request, yeah. it says, yeah. yeah. Okay, and that works great. Do we want to maybe hold off on this and get a clean version because we said that last time and then see the clean version and kind of put it in, into perspective and then we changed more? Or do we just well, I don't think it? we didn't put it on the agenda for adoption, right? Mm -hmm. But no, we, we, is, we, we could decide that it's ready for the consent agenda next time. Ooh, let's do that. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So we won't talk about it, but we get to look at it one more time. Yeah. 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 Yes. No, it was not on the agenda. Yeah, okay, perfect. So let's put this on the consent agenda for next meeting. And I'll send out a clean version. <laughs> and uh, and we can pull it off if, if folks have further Do you want me to take a draft? Huh? Do you want me to take the draft off of there for next time? Yeah. 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 So you're good putting this into its next yep. version? Okay, awesome. <coughs> Just send that to uh, Libby and me when you're... Do you want me to review with everyone the changes, or do you feel like we have it? Uh, I can just go through them quickly and let me know if I go wrong. So item three will read, report at least quarterly to the mop Pillar Roxbury School District Board of Directors. Dot dot dot. Mm -hmm. Under four, we change work with the full board to ensure the community is presented with timely, accurate, relevant, and understandable budget and financial information for the district. And then we killed five, and six is now gone. And six reads review and report on other financial matters. And the board's really has. And, I, and I'm sorry to, after you've already kind of finished, to bring one other little thing up, but the first one is talking about the quarterly reports, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the quarterly reports go into detail on the current year, have some information about prior year execution to compare, but the quarterly reports don't show proposed budgets. I mean, the proposed budget is the budget we develop and we're going to adopt and that's not any that's not included in the quarterly reports as we have been seeing them so and I'm since we've got two maybe you just eliminate that maybe it's with the current year's budget and prior year's prior budgets. year's budget and then knock off that because yeah. the next one says is about the proposed the, budget yeah 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 that's it Wait, so how does the change read now? Meet quarterly to review district financials with the current year's budget and prior year's budgets. Period. Period. But is it really prior year's budgets or is it the prior year's budget? It's I the see. prior year's. Yeah. 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 Not, not S apostrophe, but apostrophe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the prior year's budget. Okay. I'll go to that. It's a budget. Singular. Then do you want to add proposed in two? Conduct an in-depth review of the proposed budget. That's I think what you're yeah. doing. So yeah, yeah sure. Applies at this point yet? Yeah. I thought this was going to be some. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. No, no, no. no. Actually, now the time to catch it. Mm -hmm. Good fortune that Libby's not here and you're here tonight. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, it'd be creating policies, you know. <laughs> I can't live with this. <laughs> all right, excellent. Any other changes? We managed to edit, edit or delete all six lines. <laughs> <laughs> and put it on consent for the next time.
Um, policy readings, vision. Okay, here we go. Um, at the retreat, we established what I thought was a vision, but everybody wasn't at the retreat. So when we brought it to the board, there was some more discussion about it. So we decided tonight to have a, another round of discussions about it. And so I'm going to hand this out, but before I do, I'm going to remind you that the vision is a statement of what the organization wants to become. It's a preferred future. A vision describes how the future will look if the organization achieves the vision. The vision answers three questions. What do we do? For whom do we do it? And what is the benefit? So at the, um, at the retreat, we came up with this vision that's in bold. There was a suggested change, which comes next. And then underneath, I had put, we had some discussion about a mission. So this was the potential mission we said we might have. And if I remember correctly, as a board, we said, we would establish a vision, and then each school would establish a mission to go with that vision. Is that correct? Is that how you remember? Yes. yes. OK, so I just put that mission down at the bottom so you remember, because during that discussion, there was some incorporation of that into the vision. So what I'd love to do is give you one quiet moment to read both of these, the in uh, the bold vision and the suggested change, and think about it for a minute. Okay, since I always believe in a two-part process, I'm going to ask you to talk to the person sitting next to you at your table about these two and decide, do you like one better than the other or what is your suggestion? Report out if you have anything to say about either of these two, or if you chosen one or one with changes. Yeah. Go for it. Um, so we like this. Well, we like the suggested change statement, and we appreciate the addition of um, build on their talents and passions because it really connects with um, personalized learning and just personalization in general. And what we want to change is the word strive because while it indicates um, an active sort of, while it indicates that we're working to improve um, at the same time it sort of is an excuse like oh we we tried but we couldn't really so I think at, at the same time like while it um, confirms that like we're not perfect and we're always going to be working to um, improve it still gives us sort of like an excuse to cop out. And so the suggested replacement was actively work, but that's a little bit clunky and there's no, I don't know, yeah. We were thinking maybe other people would have suggestions yes. for a citizen. <laughs> yeah. um, oh. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Should we go all the way around yeah, once yeah. and then yeah. talk all together? Um, actually, you picked a verb and we picked another one in there. We liked the second one and we were trying to figure encourage. Did that going from ensure to encourage seemed a wide jump? And so, you know, is it empower or inspire or I don't know, we were worried about that one. So I guess both of us are thinking about the verbs. I like empower. 
What does this group have to the, say? The, the, the empower versus the inspire thing we thought maybe doesn't actually, it's more like a pep talk versus um, giving teaching skills, but empower maybe does both those things. It teaches the skills and it sets the tone. Well, we basically took build on their talents and passions and stuck it after children in the first one. Um, we liked ensure better than encourage, but I like empower as well. I, th I thought encourage was a little too weak. Um, and I like the boldness of just saying this is what we are. I mean, it's 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 a future vision. Uh, it sets a high bar. I know we're not there yet, but it's where we want to be. Um, and if, if, you know, if we're talking about vision out there, that's, we don't want to be constantly striving. We want to hit a point where we are this place. And remember, it's your preferred future. Um, so we got a little bit hung up as well on schools strive. It just struck us as, as strange. Um, I, I agree with, with you guys over there um, about the verb strive maybe falling short, but I think we were also struggling with the idea that schools are kind of institutions and maybe it should be more about the people, but we, we weren't entirely certain how to address that. One of the things that I had flagged was the word equitable, but in the context that Bridget explained it to me, I think it makes perfect sense. But from a standpoint of where my head is, like applied economics, equitable often means everybody's kind of on the same level regardless. Like, So you'd be taxed the same percentage regardless of your income, whereas something that's based on fairness um, is generally progressive in nature. but equitable here, I think, I think essentially means that, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, something I also thought was a little, I, I just raise it for, for discussion, is the word talents. Um, it generally refers to like innate abilities rather than skill sets um, or the ability to- Fixed mindset, baby. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I, I, I feel like we could use something that's more growth mindset. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. You got, that's, yeah. There's a lot of teachers in the district who would call that one out. Yeah. Right. Good interests. Did you have a substitute well, for stride? I was <laughs> wondering if we, if we wanted to, and this, then this would build back, if we wanted the sentence to start with a we instead of our schools, and then it could be, oh. you know, we are working. We, strive, we are working. Or we are working. We or aim. We, we aim. We, well, I like the working idea because yeah. it's more common. We expect. We expect. We expect ourselves. We expect we our expect schools. To be we expect our schools to be. Mm -hmm. no. It's our turn. We demand. Yeah, big, yes. Big <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, Ryan Karen, and Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can solve it. So we definitely both came in preferring the first one. Mm -hmm. And I'd say that we both agree with Jim that it should stick with the future-oriented language. Our schools are this. That's what we want for our vision. Um, and preferred ensure to encourage because that's our job. We don't want to just suggest that they become this thing. We, our purpose is to make it happen. We do it. Um, and then we got, we got a little in the weeds on talents and passions because um, there are problems with the talent, the idea of talent, what is talent, and there's issues with passion. There's been a lot of uh, blowback on the passion idea that it puts too much pressure on kids to identify this one thing that's going to drive their whole lives. And so we changed passions to interests, but without a lot of conviction. But the other, but the thing about the whole phrase of building on talents and passions is that it introduces the kids as having agency in this situation, which I checked in with the students and they confirmed they love that phrase because it gives them agency in the situation. But if we could do that in a way that doesn't use talents and passions, but some other. <laughs> Well, what if we just, how about this? What if we just change ensure to empower? Because I think empower 
implies that we give them agency, and then we don't have to ascribe that to a talent or a passion or an mm -hmm. interest that might have. What we've got to take personalization. Huh? We're we're going to take that out of it. I'm going to go back a minute to build on their what? Their, what is it? Their, their passions. On? I'm going to go back to the students a minute, who said they liked talents and passion. Um, now that you've heard everybody, are you still liking it? Or are you wishing it said something else, like interests or something? I'm liking it a little bit less, specifically the talents. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed that when I was reading it. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that makes, I think, the use of that word acceptable is the build on or mm -hmm. um, because I think I'd like to think that all children have some talent in some <laughs> some way um, and so yeah mm -hmm. I, think. you think it's workable? Yeah. I think it's workable. Mm -hmm. You think the word talents is workable. How are you feeling about passions? I like passions. I think interests could also work there, maybe even more, it would be more encompassing of what it actually, like what we're actually trying to get to. What, what if instead of talents, and I get that that's problematic, is we use something like interest and creativity or creativity and interests. So we're introducing the idea that students are using their own. So now you're putting pressure on them to be creative. <laughs> yeah, but they're creating. It's already pressure pressure. Pressure. But they're creating this future. They are creating their future with this. I, okay, I, we don't definitely don't need to. I'm trying to think of a way to. Um, I mean, I guess we could just put interests in there. It just seems so much less emo yeah. like the emotionally. It's more. Yeah. Than passion. It's like now it looks like it's written by a committee. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like the word talent because I'm going with you that I believe everybody has some talents. It might be a very small Maybe. one. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe as yet undiscovered. Yeah. The, the, reason, the reason I like oh it is because it's maybe my, ta my talents do not fed, fit into the average public education. But yeah. I got some anyway. Mm -hmm. And I wish that you'd at least acknowledge them and support me in them. That's the way I look at it. Uh, I think if you put build on to that creates a... Mm -hmm more of a growth mindset than a fixed. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah I, I agree that the lead up helps and, and, and the took out the lead passions up. and put yeah, interests instead of passions. Could you live with that? Wait, I didn't, I didn't get that. Honestly, I would go with whatever Jim had said earlier about <laughs> just moving the build on talents and passions up into the first one. What? And, Does so, that get away from vision versus mission? I, no, we're not. We're not. We're not going to the mission thing. <laughs> no, but vision yeah. is this aspiration. That's where we got started on all this. Yeah. yeah. So, so that suggestion would read that ensure all children build on their talents and passions to grow into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. suggestion. And we're not in placing, replacing ensure with empower. We could. I think we should. I think we should okay. too. I really like that verb. Yep. All right. Now I'm completely lost. But now we're not insuring. Yeah. Now we're not insuring it, which is important. Are we really able to insure? Exactly. All it's students? a vision. That's what we're. It's well, a preferred but that is what we're future. To be doing. But I, I would argue that in a preferred future, we'll always be striving, like work actively working towards mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually like empower better than sure, and I actually think empower might more reflect our job. I think our job is to give them what they need. To do this, have their own power. Not, agency. you know, mm -hmm. you've got you've got the ability to be a damn good cellist. And you're going to do it, <laughs> but like, <laughs> make sure that when they leave here, sure, if, like what if I'm they want to do that, what I do to my we prepare them. To yeah. Do that. Huh? Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I, I that's agree. A, that's a reasonable argument. Yeah. yeah. So we I'm a little lost on where we're putting in this uh, skills, talent. Kind of so talent. I've got our yeah. schools are caring, creative. And equitable communities that empower all children. All children. All children to build on their talents. On their talents. We're leaving in talents and passions by acquiring skills. 
<laughs> or, or build on their skills. <laughs> skills. I like to have. I just wanted to throw out putting skills in there. Yeah, I, I have. In I preference that down to talent. To the no. Mark. In addition to <laughs> <laughs> talent, skills, skills, talents, passion, interests, <laughs> oh, desires, <laughs> aspirations, tools, clubs, vanities. Where's the source? Oh, it's fine. It's good. Right. And parental expectations. Yeah. Oh. Passing fancies. <laughs> Our schools are caring, creative, and equitable communities that empower all children to build on their talents. Is it just and you can do it that way and passions. Yeah. Passions. Are we adding a three? Is this a comma? Or there was no support for it? adding three. Should have started earlier. <laughs> need a second for that. Talents and have we changed passions? Passion or are we leaving, leaving it. Maybe passions. We're going bold. And we're grow into engaged citizens and lifelong learners. Yeah. There is a consensus. Okay, here we go. One more time. Our uh. schools are caring, creative, and equitable communities that empower all children to build on their talents and passions to grow into engaged citizens and lifelong learners. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Stop. We can do it. Full stop. Full stop. Don't read it. Now we just have to pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> do I hear a motion? Really? I move that. Yeah. What you just said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you accept the amended um, vision as a vision for the Montpelier Roxbury School. I do. We, we, we didn't warrant adopting it. I don't think we can adopt it. Yeah, I don't think we can adopt it. We yeah. haven't gone through the warning process. <laughs> Sorry. Grieving and warning Well, think about it, though. In a couple meetings, this is going to be stuck in the consent agenda. We're not even going to pay attention to it. <laughs> oh, well, wait, wait. I'm not even willing to go to the couple. How about if it's uh, you feel strongly enough about it so it could go in next meeting's consent agenda? It hasn't been warned. It has been warned. Yeah. And it's only seven days till the next meeting. Yeah. It is? I try. I know. Yeah. Sorry to break. Now we've got it. I think I think we can. But just, I think we've got it. But we can put it on autopilot. December sixth. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sending it. So you have on the last version. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, um, thank you, Tina. Thank you, Tina. The worst thing to do is write as a committee, and you've done very well. <laughs> thank and you for your guidance. Well, yes. For us, and <laughs> incredibly <laughs> fast. <laughs> fast. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I move we adjourn. I do motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Steve, second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?